Hello. Hi, welcome, welcome to Podcast Podcast. Yes. You, What? <laughs> you said hi or hello. Well, you hello is hi. It's hi. the same thing. But who? You have to say the same thing at once, don't you? Like, hi or no, hello. Hello, right. hello and welcome we to. Say? Welcome to Podpad Studios. Welcome, all right, right. right. Anyway, we've done it now, so let's just get on with it. Come on. Welcome to Pod... Oh, you're not doing it. I've just did it. Oh, God. Bloody right, God. just carry on. Where, anyway, what have we been doing all this week? <laughs> just, di- just ignore, right? Anyway. Welcome to Podpad Studios. <laughs> so, anyway, I think they've established that they've arrived at Podpad Studios. Hi, Mrs. Break. Who am I? Master Break. No, I'm master maker, not master breaker. You're the one that breaks things. Anyway, isn't it nice to be back? <laughs> yeah, anyway, where are we? We're sitting out here in our back garden at the moment because basically the workshop is a mess and it's even more of a mess <laughs> just behind the camera because we're building a new workshop. We're digging it all out, trashing everything. We just need more space. I don't so... want to even be in that room anymore. No, so we decided well. to come and sit in the garden and just enjoy. Yeah. Anyway, so what have we been doing? What have we been doing? Well, we went to make a central. Yeah. Woo! which was brilliant. Brilliant. And who did we meet? I don't know who did we meet. We met the main maker, Colin first. Oh yeah. <laughs> about me then uh, yeah brilliant. yeah no actually it was really really good loads of builders actually loads of makers yeah. loads going on it was it, i tell you what's nice about that show is you just you can talk to people you just chat about building things yeah. and making things and it's just brilliant that I was the it. thing about colin he come around with his kids and they had to go in the car and everything and then had a yeah. little chat and then obviously he was in great demand whole day long well he was he was, he was a drop-in though he wasn't even there officially he, was yeah, no. he just turned up to he the show because he wanted in. to look around the show yeah and then he spent so much time talking to people who make stuff yeah. which is absolutely brilliant like you know the enthusiasts are what powers that show and yeah. right at the very end he come back when it was a bit quieter and he had quite a long chat to you yeah no it was really really stuff. good talking about building stuff and about youtube and about yeah. how he yeah. moved forward and all that it's really really, really nice brilliant. it was really relaxing and good yeah, and, and then after on his social media he put this little post about oh i, I met loads of um, small channel and enthusiasts and people who are doing it you know yeah. just at home and put your details in here and share them and it's just so nice that he supports all levels it is because it's easy to think that when you get to x millions of people yeah. watching you that you're so high up that you don't think you forget kind of where no. you've come from but he doesn't which is really so cool um, lots of other people as well yeah who else did we meet we met guy um, with the robot arm yeah this guy from yeti tools who's bought made smart bench that they had there but he also made this huge robotic arm to celebrate a sales thing that they did but and mm. have a party well, it was but celebrate it was amazing the number of sales yeah, of their cnc like machine which thousands. i must admit i really did like and um, i'm still tempted but I managed I'm, to get him all the way around and out without buying a new machine oh no yes I'm still thinking about but it. Luckily, anyway, yeah. Mm. And then we also um, met the Staffordshire Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters who they were quite were cool. Brilliant. They had all their proton packs on display, and some of them yeah. were like scratch built from things you find around the house that anyone could do. Some of them were 3D printed, and some of them were sort of vacuum formed, original, you know, really, really exact yeah. replicas. But it was nice to see the gamut of different ways of building. They had the full size Ecto 1. They had a wonderful Ecto 1 there. Really yeah, it was well absolutely finished. fab. Yeah. And then they had a little radio control trap it looked like the Ghostbusters trap but they put a little just drove it around it, everywhere and they drove it around and it was just cool it was a really yeah. good mix of people there was entertainment and also learning I wish we could have gone to more of the talks but we were just, just too busy we had I mean we, we had the spinner there and we just didn't stop yeah. for two days it was constant people wanting to sit in the car wanting to talk about how it was built yeah uh, and of course, the park next to it was a DeLorean and Kits. the kit. So people just wanted to know all about the cars. It was great. Yeah. It was it was nice. It was and really... numbers were up, so it was really cool. Yeah, and just a brilliant show. Don't forget to download the app because there's an yes. app for it really makers. is quite good actually. Yeah, yeah, it lets you share all your projects and look at everybody else's projects. So really cool. And yeah. who else did we meet? Oh yeah, the Robot Wars people. Oh yes. I, they, the robots are really cool, of course, if you've ever seen them up in the flesh. Like Matilda huge. and Shunt. Yeah, and they're heavy. They're really heavy, huge things. Of course, what we wanted to ask yeah. was, or what Mr. Breaker asked was, that's an interesting trolley you're using to move that robot around. And it had like a hydraulic thing in it, so you could just lift the robot onto the trolley with no... So Mrs. Breaker has been thinking about how are we going to move the T1 around when it's finished? Because, of course, the T1 project has been progressing significantly. We might have to um, compromise on the van thing because we well, might have to take it on the truck. Well, we've actually got other ideas as well. Yeah. Combined, now we, we're much further on with the T1 project, things that we could add to it yeah. and turn it into more of a show yeah. rather than just a standalone robot. So 
you know, yeah. watch this space. Anyway, the update's due on the T1. Yeah. So it's all about the radio. Yeah, so I got to spend some money. So uh, the radio control systems, because one of the things I found was that if I could... I think I mentioned in a previous episode that I'm the weak link in driving it because it has the three track system. It was very difficult to control. But I found a method to solve that problem with a new super duper radio control system. So really, have a look at this. Have a look at this. Now, one thing I uh, have spoken about through the project is controlling this tank system, uh, this track system, and the difficulties involved with, with controlling it. Now, there are hundreds of different ways of doing this. We, 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 we talked about tethering it, um, but then decided not to because I wanted it to be kind of a little bit more sort of mobile. Um, so it all came down to radio control. Now, for years and years and years and years, I've had my DX18, Spectrum DX18, which is just the best radio that I've ever, ever used. It's really good, it's rock solid, but it is quite old now and it's quite limited in, in, in how you can program things and move things around and do things. Now, sort of, I suppose the purists among you are going to go, well, yeah, use loads you can do with these. And I thought about, is it time for an upgrade for my radio? I could I could move to a new DX18 or a new DX21 or something like that. But they are very, 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 very expensive radios. I'm not saying they're bad, they're not, they're great, but they're expensive radios. I decided to not retire this, this is still going to be used for lots of things, but I decided to drive this with this, and I bought myself a new radio system. Now, it's the FR Sky uh, X20S. Now, the beauty of this radio is it's so flexible in offering, if you like, its programming options. There's so much more that I can do with it than that in terms of driving this. And I've already set this up and I found it so much easier um, simply because I can, I, well, it's hard to explain really. So basically, in essence, what I'm trying to do is, or make easy, is that when I turn this, because remember, this isn't turning like a tank. It's got the third wheel on the back. So I kind of need to turn the wheel on the back and then have one track go at a certain speed and the other track go at a certain speed and the tracks to know how fast they've got to go in proportion to how far I turn this. Now, I'm sure I could do that all with an Arduino and programming and all whatever, but I was struggling doing it with this radio. This radio makes doing what I've just said a breeze. Even I can do it in this one. You just go in and tap a few buttons and all of a sudden, before I know it, I'm moving the stick in one direction. This track is going at 100%, that track is going at 50%. This is all turning on its own, all from me just moving one stick. So this is, this is awesome. I'm gonna do a full review on this uh, a bit later on. There are lots of reviews online, but they tend to be for drones and helicopters. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how useful this little gadget has been for controlling a robot. Um, I still use these. These are great, and we, we use these. We'll, we'll use these for controlling the guns. These are RF switches. So you press a button, it triggers a relay. That relay can then switch whatever I want. So we'll use that for putting the water on the guns, spinning the guns. It's really, really useful. I use these, as I said, for years with this. They just have always just clipped on the back, and I've gone along with the droids. I can press buttons, and I can make sounds. Interestingly, <laughs> this gives me the option to do all of this in this now as well. I don't think I'll replace these for the moment, but it means now I, you know, I will probably move our robots or our other droids onto this system away from the Spectrum system, simply because of flexibility it gives me with, with control. Um, yeah, but from this point of view, I can now drive it. It's really, really good. And as I said, I'll give you a demo and I'll do a bit of a review on this later on. So I'm just mocking up the bodywork at the moment with a bit of cardboard to see if I can get some shapes and uh, make some decisions. This thing is going to just look massive. I mean, it's going to be great. Um, the question is going to be what... I was going to do these in fibreglass, but I have thought about EVA foam. It's lightweight, but it doesn't... Ugh. EVA foam always looks like EVA foam, doesn't it? Always kind of looks a little bit, even though you can produce some incredible stuff with it, it just it sometimes looks a bit amateur. So I think what I'm going to do is get all these shapes made up in cardboard. 
get them filled, get them sanded, and then make some moulds, uh, I think, for fibreglass. Almost tempted maybe to do it with aluminium as well, but the problem with the aluminium is going to be the, just the weight of all of this. Although, it's not a massive amount of bodywork on it, so I'll have, I'll have a think, I'll have a think. But I think the idea was to do it in fibreglass to build it up, and obviously then we'll have the shoulders and everything up there as well. I've just mocked up the upper torso, the lower torso and the ring. Uh, trying to get trying to get sizes at the moment. So yeah, let's keep going. So I'm doing a little bit more work on the moulding the shape on the on the T1. I'm thinking fiberglass is going to be my best bet, mainly because if I do it in EVA foam, the we're probably going to store this outside. Um, I don't think the EVA foam is going to be resilient enough to actually survive what this is going to, you know. The other issue with EVA foam that I've had in the past is because this is a, quite a hard wearing object, any paint we add to this will just probably get um, removed. So fiberglass is the way to go. Now there's no point in me making a mould for a one-off piece. So the way I'm doing this, as you can see, is going to be to make a former up in cardboard. This will all be kind of fitted and I'm going to get some depth to it and then I'll add some detailing around, uh, sand all this off and shape all this. What we'll then do is cover this with a, with a, a layer of fibreglass, um, very rough, very coarse. That will then give me this shape but in fibreglass. Over the top of that we'll use um, a, 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 a sort of a high grade filler, fill it all, smooth it all, sand it all back, paint it all, prime it, paint it, and then of course you'll have basically a moulded finished look like the film one. Um, I'm still in two minds. I've got, I have a major problem when it comes to building replicas. I just don't like building them. Um, there's so many unique features I want to add to this. Um, one of them is we've got an old um, moped that we, that we built the Dread bike out of and I've got the body panels for that moped and some of them just look so cool and I just really want to stick them on it almost a almost a transformer style transformer meets terminator but at the moment I need to make this former up so I'm just going to carry on sticking cardboard so that's the update for the T1 there's going to be more next week and it's going to be a lot more. Yeah, we've got loads in the can for that. I mean, we haven't, we're not, we've been working so hard on the workshops at the moment and we've got so much other work coming in at the moment that the T1 is not stalled, it's just, it's fun. It's kind of more in the background and it, well, I say it's fun, there's always problems Plus with the damn thing. Plus stuff but, we can't figure at the moment. So. Yeah, there's a few technical issues, but I'll figure them out. Yeah. I'll figure them Sometimes out. Sometimes you need time in a project to let things to stand back work from it. them through, to chat, stand back. And I said we've been so busy options. with other things and the yeah. show's on yeah. and I said the yeah. workshop's been and redone. Of course, and we're starting to promote Swindon now really heavily because yes. Swindon is on the 19th and the 18th of July. Yep. Uh, June, even June. Is it June or July? June. June, June. remember Breaker. that, June. Uh, and We've so got loads there, obviously we're sponsoring yeah. it, but we've also got lots of our props there. We've got the spinner there, we've got That's all right. the bikes there and of course it'll be the first time all of our film motorcycles have appeared in one uh, in shop. one shop, one yeah. place, We've which is really, really good. We've also heard from the owner of some of the owls that we made, and we're going to yeah. have, probably have two of those owls coming back to the roost. So a little request, anyone else who's got an owl, if we you might, want to bring yeah. it down, there will be a place to put it. We're sort of yeah. negotiating that at the moment, but we're happy, hoping to have a little bit of a reunion an of owl owls. owl reunion. I don't know what you call that. Hoot, 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 hoot at Swindon. <laughs> we're having hoot. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> We put all the details in the link so you can see where to go to get tickets and stuff. And it's the 18th and 19th of June in Swe Steam in Swindon. You sure? Steam? Steam? Steam, <laughs> Steam in Swindon in July. No, June. Is it June or July? Bye, everyone. Bye.